What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So we're going to talk about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Chucky Season 3. We'll be talking about Scream 7. We'll be talking about Halloween and Daniel Harris's recent comments over on, over on the podcast, Talk Scary to Me. And then I'll be concluding this by talking about some alleged details about Beetlejuice 2. Starting off with Chucky Season 3, Chucky Season 3 Part 2 we know is aiming, it seems to resume filming later this month, I touched on this yesterday in a separate video, Deadline again put out a list of shows that are looking to resume later this month after Thanksgiving, Chucky was on the list of those shows, yesterday I talked about the seance scene that we have coming our way during Part 2, Don Mancini confirmed that with Pop Culture, Pop Culture Planet recently, and a few of you highlighted the glimpse of a red room that is shown in the promo package to back it up. And it seems the Lincoln administration is part of the inspiration for Mancini this season. And it's evident by the loss of the youngest Colin's son, Joseph. And we see how that's being incorporated into the narrative. And I'm pretty certain and if I were to bet the seance most likely will have to do with the Collins family trying to reach out to their deceased son after President Collins has now seen his son wandering the White House in the Halloween episode. However, Don Mancini also confirmed something else to Pop Culture Planet. Now, yes, this was also highlighted in the promo package, but for those of you who have not seen the promo package or for those of you who just wanted like a definitive confirmation of it, Charles Lee Ray, Brad Dorff would be returning in part two, not only in voice form as Chucky, but in live action form. We got a g glimpse of that in the teaser. So my guess is this is just going to be another ghost. And he, of course, will be portraying Charles Lee Ray. Granted, would Charles Lee Ray actually look like that? If he were portraying his ghost form, is Brad Dorf playing another character? That's another inter interesting thing. Brad Dorf will be appearing in live action, but that doesn't mean he'll be back as Chucky now that I think about it. Because look at how he looked in the teaser. He could be just portraying a different ghostly form of a ghost that haunts the White House. Time will tell. Scream 7 has a small tidbit of a rumor for now until video footage drops. Well, actually... Yeah, video footage hasn't dropped yet of this. Something else came out of Nev Campbell of Monster Mania, but not this. This was over the weekend. Nev Campbell was asked about Scream 7, and she doubled down on the fact that she would be in Scream 7 if Spyglass pays her. Now, I saw people saying, does that mean they aren't going to secure her? And sure, maybe that is what happens. But to me, it speaks to what I've heard, and that's the usage and pay still mean a lot to her. She's not saying anything new, but I'm curious if her comment also means she's satisfied with Sydney's usage in the story. I mean, to be quite honest, it sounded like six would have been the worst outing, but then you would have had some folks going, oh, well, at least she was in it. I trust that whatever they have cooking up for Scream 7 is going to be well written, but all Nev has to do is sign the dotted line. But the ball, of course, is in Spyglass's court. That's why I've stated she's in the story. But just because she's in the story doesn't mean that Nev Campbell or Sidney Prescott will actually be coming to Scream 7 in any capacity if they do not secure her with a proper deal that she thinks she's entitled to. Uh, time will tell how all this will go. Nev also did make some comments on Scream 6 at Monster, Monster Mania. But if she doesn't return in Scream 7, then I'm also skeptical on if Patrick Dempsey will return. Because some of the stuff I've heard wouldn't make sense for Mark to be back if Sidney's not back. So these are her comments that Nev gave about Scream 6. She said, I watched it uh, two weeks ago. It took me a minute. I don't know why, Um, but I actually thought they did a really good job. You know, I think the cast are really powerful, wonderful actors. I don't wish these movies ill will. You know, I wanted the movie to be good. It's not like I'm sitting in my house going, I hope it sucks. I hope it doesn't do well, like a lot of the people on Twitter seem to do. You know I care about all of the people involved. You know there's someone at the top who only thinks about money and that's their prerogative. But for the rest of them, everybody else, I care about these movies being good and I care about that for you guys too because I know you guys love these films. So I thought they did a great job. It's nice of her to make a comment like that. Very cordial, very classy, very Nev Campbell-esque. So I hope she's in Scream 7. If she's not, I'm not going to lose sleep. And I, I got to tell you guys, there is no reason to start raging because you're going to Spyglass will get the message if Spyglass stops losing money. But granted, people are still going to pay to see other Spyglass projects. So Spyglass is going to continue to not care. But diving into Halloween, Halloween, Danielle Harris, more specifically, went over her attempts to share her thoughts on how 
she could return to Halloween during the Talk Scary to Me podcast. Shout out to Drum Dumps for telling us about this because it basically confirms what we had been hearing by her talking about it on her podcast. Not that she hasn't done it in the past. Basically, Danielle said that she tried to reach out about her ideas for a TV show and a movie before the Chucky show was even on the air. And it was during the recent Blumhouse trilogy. So, of course, nothing was going to happen. However, she did use a very interesting word to address the recent news. She said that they are talking about a multiverse, she guesses. And the thing is, does she really mean multiverse there or was she trying to reference the cinematic universe news? Or is she now expanding on what that cinema on what the fact that cinematic universe would include and it could include the multiverse? I don't know. The timelines don't necessarily mean we need to start exploring Marvel like stuff and doing multiverse. So I'm inclined to think she just slipped up here and meant cinematic universe. But would you guys be open to them using a multiverse format in order to just see Danielle Harris back as Jamie Lloyd? And if they're acknowledging the existence of a multiverse, how do you think that would come off if it's implemented into the Halloween franchise? I'll just say this. I sincerely think she just slipped up and meant the cinematic universe news. And in placement of cinematic universe, she said multiverse. Basically, Halloween, you could argue, has, has unofficially a cinematic multiverse. But those timelines are not acknowledged by any of the characters as, hey, you know, in this timeline, your character died. In that timeline, Michael Myers switched clothes with someone who got his head chopped off and then he went off and disappeared. And, you know, in this timeline, Buster Rhymes is a part of it. We don't have that stuff going on where we're acknowledging the fact that this is split up in all these timelines. And I don't think we need to start doing it now. So I don't think the multiverse is coming to Halloween. But you guys can let me know what you think about her words down in the comment section below. And I'll leave a link to Drum Dumb's video for you to check it out. Last thing here I want to talk about is Beetlejuice. Juice 2. So here are a few alleged details about Beetlejuice 2, including the opening sequence. This is coming from a Reddit user who said that they can tell us a few things. The film begins in a studio with a TV show Ghost House, which Lydia is presenting. Lydia is addicted to pills and is haunted by Beetlejuice. Charles is dead. Jenna Ortega plays her daughter Astrid. Well, Willem Dafoe plays Wolf Jackson from the Afterlife Crimes Unit, a kind of afterlife cop. Apparently, he's the best thing in the film, and I can't wait to see him in this. Again, this came from a Reddit user who claims their friend has seen a cut of the long overdue sequel and has sent them script details. I'll see how true this is anyway sooner rather than later because I'm expecting to get a few things about Beetlejuice 2 sent my way. So I'll see if any of this actually ends up being true when they start reporting on it in the media. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notification, and this video in the description. I'll have links on my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.